Let me talk to you about some uh, housekeeping tasks that uh, you need to check on when you're doing the firewalls lab. Now I'm going to connect to one of the computers that I have set up with the virtual machines for this particular lab. And uh, the IP number here is 192.168.7.102. And the username is Firewall Setup. And then capital P A S S one two three. Now, uh, here's something you should check on. It's possible to share a folder with the host operating system. So let's do this. I'm going to go to my documents and I'm going to create a folder here. And uh, when you're doing the lab, just make sure that the folder is there. Uh, and if it's not, make it. So I'm going to call it vm-shared. And that's all I need to do on the host. I'm going to open up VMware Workstation. And for both the XP Pro and the Server 2003, I'm going to go to VM and Settings, Options, and notice we here we have a uh, Shared Folders selection. And it's currently disabled. I think we're going to have to start the machine up before we can fix this. So go on and start it up. Resume. Settings. Options. Shared folders. Now we can click here on Always uh, Enabled. And uh, I'm going to go down here and click on this path. And go to properties and uh, browse back up to my documents and there's the, the folder I just uh, created click OK OK and OK and now from um, inside my virtual XP if I go to my computer notice there's a, uh, a VMware dash shared on the host and if you double click on it there's nothing in it right now but this will give you a place you can save the capture files or whatever else you have um, from the virtual machine back to the host and then from the host the host operating system is actually connected to the internet so you can use uh, any kind of webmail to move uh, to send those out to yourself or to me for that matter so that's one little um, housekeeping chore. And let's do the same thing here on the, uh, the server 2003. So now that I got it up and running, I can go here to VM and settings, options, shared folders, always enabled. And again, let's check our path here and um, fix this. Well, we, we've got both these mapped to the same uh, uh, folder on the host. But that's okay. Apparently, it didn't like that for some reason. Let's go back and check and see what happened. I've got the message before, but it was. Uh, because I didn't have the folder shared. Let me 
make sure I've got the right one picked out. It worked that time. Now for this for the um, for the firewall slab, I'm gonna go and start up the smooth wall polar. Now there's a you're gonna have an issue here, and it's actually running. If you click in here, um, maybe go full screen. It should. There it is. Um, it's actually running. Um, we just haven't logged in yet. The, uh, the problem you're going to have with the smooth wall is its, uh, it's time is going to be wrong. So if you go over here to the server 2003, remember this is on the private side. We can connect to the management interface. And of course, um, Internet Explorer is going to remember this. IP number for you so you don't have to remember that. So this is going to be admin and then happy. Let me spell right. Happy days. And now if we look around here. Uh, where it's at services time we can go set the time on this and you uh, the US is way down the list see it thinks it's April 2nd uh, Set this for your local time every every time. See, in the real world, you're not going to turn your you're not going to suspend your your firewall. Um, notice here, you can also set your firewall up to actually go out and get the uh, um, the the true network time from a. Uh, network time server. Um, it seems like there's always a gotcha here. Um, I told it 11. It subtracted 5 from it. Uh, somehow it's doing Greenwich Mean Time. But if you come back and set it again, it usually works. So now we've got our time set. Um, now, if you want to, for the uh, for the purposes of our experiment here, you can go on and do this. Uh, I'm going to go back to the smooth wall and uh, going to create another snapshot. Um, I said it's 1153 or something like that. So here's my, here's the reason we're doing this. In the process of doing your little lab exercise here, if you decided to roll back uh, your smooth ball, you're going to lose your time that you just got through setting. So uh, if you create another snapshot, you'll at least be close. You might be a few minutes off depending on how long you've been working. Now, um, in the real world, you certainly want to set your um, your firewall and any other devices that are going to be doing logging t to the correct time. And connecting to a network time server is an excellent way of doing this. Um, the reason you want the, you know, the correct time is on all your devices, it's going to make it a lot easier to put together occurrences on your network that uh, have been logged by two or more uh, uh, systems. And if you 
if your time is off on those two systems, say it's off by three minutes and 37 seconds, you know, if you're trying to correlate things and the time is off, you're going to have to do mental gymnastics um, to correlate, you know, to adjust one to the other one. So if all of your devices that are logging have have set themselves with the uh, the network with a network time server, you're going to have a lot less trouble there. Finally, there's one other little housekeeping um, chore here, and uh, again, this is one of those ones where if somebody else has already done it on that particular virtual machine you're you know you don't have to do it again but I want to open up Wireshark go to edit and preferences and go to columns and time and I'm going to go here to um, let's see time Should have given me that's interesting. It's like you never get the uh, you never get the same thing twice. Let's see. I think it's in this list somewhere. I don't want delta time. There you go. I want the absolute time. And click OK. Now, I think to get this to work, you gotta go out and come back in. But now, your uh, the real time should be put on the on the. Uh, So we should be good. So check that on your uh, on your Wireshark, and that's the one on the server. There's also a different uh, installation on um, the XP. So I'll go set it while I'm on this machine. So these are just little housekeeping things. Um, this is the kind of thing I usually do myself, and I'm, the more I think about this, the more I'm of the opinion that um, I didn't want that. You, um, you guys should be doing more and more of this, and me less and less of this. So, time. Yeah, this is a little bit different version. Absolute time. I prefer absolute time and date. Uh, there's a difference in the version of Wireshark um, between this one and the uh, the one on the uh, virtual server. I need to update my images sometime. But anyway, um, so the three things that I want you to check and do as necessary would be make sure that you've got a shared folder with the host on both your virtual machines and go into Wireshark on both the virtual machines and set the uh, the way the time is displayed in the time column to absolute or absolute time plus date if you have that available and uh, the third thing is set reset the time on your firewall on your smooth wall when you wake it up because it will be wrong um, and then uh, create a new snapshot or uh, just figure out if you do roll it back having to change the time before you proceed uh, onward with your uh, with whatever the experiment is that you're going to be doing so I would appreciate your uh, your help on these things And of course, now that I'm finished, I'm going to go in and
suspend all my virtual machines. As far as rolling back your firewall, uh, it's probably a good idea. If somebody else has been working before you, there may be rules in there that, uh, that have been left over, so you should roll it back and, uh, and set your time and then proceed. And of course, when you're finished here, you just simply want to click on Log Off. And that will close your remote desktop. If you do it a little bit too quick before the VMware shuts down, you'll get that uh, little message right there. It doesn't seem to hurt anything. Anyway, I was going to say uh, logging off closes, logs you off, and also closes your remote desktop connection. You're still connected to my lab, so you have to. Ever what version of uh, Microsoft you're currently using. Go in and disconnect it if you can get its attention. This is Windows 7 and there's been a couple of uh, unusual things so far. But anyway, yeah, we got it. 